Hello viewers, this is going to be an update on the broken LED street light replacement project. I want to show some interesting things in the computer in a minute, but before I do that, I want to go down the street and show the second street light that's been replaced on my street. It's kind of raining a little bit here, but I think we'll be able to get a shot of it right quick. The one I'm about to show is a piece of junk, but here's a good one. This is an American Electric 150 watt high pressure sodium street light. Yeah, it's definitely raining. Oh, I have to go quick. If the lens gets gets wet and whatever it, it does, I'll try to show it. This acorn season. This is one of the old ones here. It still works. There are so many acorns this year. And here's the new light. You can see the throw is pretty good. Or, I don't know if you can't see it, I can see it. It's not bad. And then here's all my nice sodium streetlights. I have my own collection of acorns here in the driveway. I don't know why there's so many this year, it's crazy. Sodium. Much better than LED. So far that one's still working. That's a touching low one. Another hundred and no, that's just a hundred. Hundred watt high pressure sodium one one five. Still working well. It's got a lot of hours on it. And there's all the lights on the deck. Looks pretty cool. And here's another street light, which will be shown soon. This is 70 watts. Not really sure what the brand or anything is, just got this recently. Missing a few parts, but there's that one. And then also in the HID world, I already showed that. Where's the other one? Here it is. Metal halide, 250 watts. But that's not the point of this video. 
Okay, we're back at the computer now, and we're also back to pointing the camera at the screen if I want to show something on the computer, because the screen recording software that I use, OSB, is not working properly anymore, and I don't know why. It has worked properly for, I think I've used it for years now, and all of a sudden the audio keeps getting messed up. It happened once on a previous recording a couple weeks back and it happened this is the second time I'm doing this video now because when I recorded it on the computer the audio was all screwed up and you don't want to have bad audio on a video that's no good you got to have good audio because a lot of times people will kind of just play a video in the background and so they're listening more than watching and so the audio is really important to have have correct so anyways we're doing a video and I'm doing it this way because I have not had time to figure out what is wrong with that with that program on the computer anyways so the street light that I just showed was the second one I submitted for repair and it's the same fixture that they use on the first one I submitted for repair the only difference is this time it took two or three weeks to get the fixture replaced whereas the first one I submitted it was done in three maybe even two business days I wish I was checking it every day so I would have known but it was two or three business days this one was about two to three weeks I'm not sure if the first one was a fluke in the sense that it was that quick and this is the standard response time or I'm not sure if whoops if the first one is the standard response time and this one took longer because I submitted the request just a day or two before this tropical storm thing started to develop and so I suspect that the delay was because United Illuminating was allocating resources to storm preparation and storm repair rather than routine street light repair that's my speculation I don't know anyways what I want to show here on the computer is super interesting to me. So I had an individual write into the comment box on the first video. Hopefully uh, that you can see this. The, ind <sighs> the individual was HIDLAD001 and he underscored that the fixtures are Cooper lighting fixtures and he also said they're garbage which I tend to agree with because the fact that so many of them have failed kind of speaks for itself oh I just remembered something else that was very interesting that I wanted to underscore I found out through looking at the Google Street View that these lights was installed sometime around 2018 because there is Street View pictures of the area in 2017 and in 2019. In 2017, everywhere uh, is sodium, high pressure sodium still. And then the pictures from 2019, everything is LED garbage. So, give or take a year, these lights were installed around 2018. And we're only in 2023. So, the lights, and a lot of these fixtures were broken when I moved in last year and was looking at the house last spring in 2022. And it was already broken and probably had been for a while. So, these light fixtures are lasting not even five years before they fail. And as we're seeing here, it's a whole fixture replacement. It's not relamp, it's not replace a ballast, it's not replace an igniter, it's not replace a capacitor. It's throw the whole flipping thing out and replace it with a new one. That's what they do. And somehow, that saves the planet. I couldn't tell you how. I, it's beyond me. But that's what we're being told. Anyways, 
So these fixtures, I agree, they are garbage. They don't last, and they stink, and I don't like them. So, uh, and another thing that's interesting to note, since I did my survey a couple of weeks ago, submitted all these additional units for repair, I've seen at least three more of them have broke. I was out driving at night a couple of days ago, and I saw at least three more have broke. <laughs> Pathetic. So now i got to do the survey again and make more requests for repair for those three. And who knows, however, many other ones have, have broken. And I'm only looking at my neighborhood. You know, it's not only... It is very well lit. There's streetlights everywhere. But it's not like I'm surveying miles and miles and miles. I'm surveying, like, maybe five square miles not even Pfft, pathetic anyways so this was the viewer that wrote in Alex looks like he's got some interesting material on here so I'm gonna go through and take a look at some of these videos one of these days um, anyway so these are the old lights that were installed around here these are the Cooper lighting Navion Navion, the, the Junkion, whatever it is, LED lights, and Cooper Lighting. I've I've definitely heard of the brand before. I want to say I might have some kind of electrical devices from them, maybe power taps or extension cords or something. Um, and I, I don't recall the products being particularly bad quality, but obviously there's something bad about their street lights. Anyways, this is um, this is the fixture, and you can see my speculation was correct. It's literally diodes on a circuit board, just chilling there, and it sits there and it says 16 optical and distributions available. Uh, there's no opticals; it's just diodes on a circuit board. I don't get that. And then it shows this photograph. You could barely even see this stupid, unreliable piece of junk in the background. And this... <laughs> this image, I'm pretty sure, is computer-generated. <laughs> At least the building certainly looks it. And the trees. <laughs> this one's definitely computer-generated. This looks like it was done in Microsoft Paint. And this one is definitely computer-generated as well, although the graphics is a little better. Of course, they have to be all expensive, high-end cars. Nothing, you know, economy grade. Academics. Academics? Okay. Let's teach how these actually are better, because I don't understand it. What's interesting to me is this. Available in 2200 Kelvin, 2700 Kelvin, 3000 Kelvin, 4000 Kelvin, 5000 Kelvin, or 57000 Kelvin. I would suspect fact that the ones we have here are four or five thousand Kelvin they're not totally blue like 56 or 57 thousand Kelvin would be they're definitely not warm definitely these they got to be four or five I would love to see one of these in person because this is very close to sodium sodium is supposedly like 1900 or 2000 Kelvin so this is very close, and I would be really, really interested to see one of these in person. So that's the ones that was here, and I, I guess they're still under, under manufacturer. Um, Five-year warranty, so that makes sense. They're all starting to go after five years. Stupid. Um, and then these are the ones that they're replacing them with, which is the, the Verdeon light, and this is definitely what it is. And uh, these, and they kind of have some kind of optics to them, but even this is kind of limited. I tend to think that these are just going to, well, we can see that they just kind of throw the light everywhere and whatever. Um, and this doesn't talk about the different um, colors available, but if we go to the spec sheet here, it does in fact mention it that it's available ranging from 
2200 Kelvin to 5700 Kelvin. And that is just so intriguing to me. Because why do we choose um, 5000 Kelvin if if 3000 Kelvin or 2700 Kelvin, which is standard indoor lighting, why do we choose the obnoxious 57 and 5000 colors when those colors are available? I can understand why we don't go with 2200 Kelvin because the color rendering is poor, but uh, I don't know, it's very interesting. So I'm going to look around and see if I can get a hold of one of these 2200 Kelvin units because. I'm just super intrigued. I, I have a feeling it would be a total disappointment. But, um, actually, you know what I should do? Just for pure curiosity, let's take a look on the e ripoff. These are Verdeon luminaires. Let's just see, purely for curiosity, if there is something on here that is available. So there is a few here, but the question is going to be, um, why, where's the, there we go. Uh, the question is going to be, what is the color temperature? And I always got four that's 251 watts. It's got to be unbelievably bright. Um, actually, there's quite a few of them on here. But I bet they're probably not 2200 Kelvin. I imagine those are going to be pretty rare. This one is 4000 Kelvin. I wonder, does it say it on here somewhere? 110 watts. Uh, I don't see it. It's probably buried in this number somewhere, but I don't know how to decrypt it. Hmm. Oh, here we go. Uh,. That's just a copy and paste. I don't think that that's really what this is. This one... Yeah, I guess none of them are... are clear. It says 20K on there, but I don't know. That wouldn't make any sense. That wouldn't line up with anything. The description is way too long anyways. Uh, none of these are showing um, what the color temperature is. It's probably hundreds and hundreds of dollars to just order one from a supplier somewhere. It's not, it wouldn't make any financial sense. Well, I don't know, we'll have to, uh, to evaluate that some other time when I'm not as tired. It's, it's getting tired and I'm late, so I'm going to cut the video off and go to sleep. But I uh, just wanted to do an update on the project and show some of these items of interest. If anybody knows where I could get one of those 27 or 2200 Kelvin units, let me know. Because I am super intrigued to see how they function.